2023, okay? So super excited to actually be bringing you this new curriculum, this membership that will allow you to now try out everything that we have in store for you guys. So you get a, a stronger advantage compared to how we used to do these things, okay? Yes, yes, yes. So if you can hear me well, if, if my um, audio is coming through, just do me a favor, type unlock in the chat. Let me know we all good. Peace, peace. Thank you all. Welcome back to this next session. We got something pretty dope planned out. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to share my screen for a second. And then I'm going to bring on uh, one of our other coaches. Yesterday, if you joined, then you know that we talked about the power of trading. Okay. So we just want to keep that, that ball rolling. And today we're going to take it to another notch. Okay. Turn it up. So I'll go ahead and share my screen for you. Okay, cool. And yes, yes. Thank you all for being here. Really appreciate y'all. So we're going to go ahead and get started without further ado. Um, some people may join in as we go along and that's cool. All right, that's cool. But I just really want to make sure that we give y'all as much time as possible for today's session because it's going to be packed with value, with love, with mind-blowing information. So I can't wait till you guys see this. Um, so just a little bit of intro before we get into our main event today. Explore, explore, explore. This is what we're bringing new to the tribe for 2023. And what we're doing is giving you an opportunity to find your way, okay? We all know that technology is definitely taking over and we don't want it to take over us. Instead, we wanna be in control. We wanna really understand how to put these things to use, okay? how to really go in with these tech skills and make sure that we are the ones who are controlling our own narrative, our own tools, our own opportunities, okay? So with the Explore Tech, you pretty much get access to unlimited learning for one low rate, okay? One low base membership fee. As a member of the community, of course, you get to learn, but you also get the opportunity to earn and also to teach and to coach and to volunteer and to be a part of something bigger. Unlock Academy has taught over 15,000 people across the globe, okay? From America to Jamaica to South Africa, we have not stopped. We got students in UK, London, and we even got students who are still hitting itself from Australia. So we just are super excited about bringing this community together closer and closer online. So with Explore, we'll now be bringing in a lot of other, of other coaches so that way you can explore various skills until you find and unlock your true tech power, okay? We believe that we are all genius in one skill or another, if not multiple, but you may not know until you get exposure. So we're really big on exposing you to these skills, sparking something in you, unlocking something in you, okay? One more mantra before you forget, there's no limit to what we can accomplish with technology. I think we've seen that over the last decade, with everything that's being accomplished with blockchain technology to social media to the the music industry how it's totally being reshaped by tech okay so um yeah just want you guys to know that what we're doing is pretty much what we feel is just a gap that the public school system has you know they take students in for free and they educate them on basic math history science biology um, but there's so much that's still missing, especially when it comes to STEM um, and engineering and design and project management and uh, fintech and investing in general, taxes, um, spirituality. There's so many different things that are missing. So at Unlock Academy, we just bring this holistic approach, okay? Holistic approach. And we like to call it holistic. So do me a favor in the chat, if y'all still with me, type holistic in the chat, okay? Holistic. We have coined that phrase, and for us, that just means we want to bring a very different approach to these, uh, to this industry when it comes to educating, okay? Like that hoodie? That's what's up. This was right here. This was designed by our special speaker tonight, all right? Shout out to Coach Greg.digital. 
All right. Excuse me. Uh, I said, Greg, I'm looking at your name, Greg. Shout out to Coach Greg. And I meant to say shout out uh, uh, Zach. Coach Zach is going to be our special teacher tonight. All right. <laughs> yeah, peace, cuzzo. Hey, what's up, NECA? I ain't know you was in the building. We got family in the building tonight. We got the tribe here. Super excited to go. So uh, before we get into uh, Zach's presentation about design, like I said, he designed these hoodies. Um, you're also going to first just know that when you sign up to be a part of the Explore Path, okay, you're going to get these design lessons from Coach Zach, okay? So not only how to design logos or websites, but also design thinking, how to even think like a designer and how to use that to solve problems, okay? Um, on top of that, you get access to courses that range from coding to gaming to Web3 to day trading to music creation and business and music, streaming, all those different things. Um, and we also want to get into African history, okay? So we got people ready on deck to share this information with you, your, your child, your nieces, your nephews, your spouse. This is for families by families, okay? Everything you see here is things that we implement in our own household, and we figure out how do we then spread that to the masses, okay? Now, the cool part about all of this is that we went back and forth about the price. Should it be $2,000 a year? Should it be $500 every six months? Should it be $200 a month? And uh, we did this equation, right? Shout out to Coach Zach. And he was like, I'm going to aggregate all of these numbers, do this data and figure out what would people really pay for this? And it feels like, whoa, I know I should be paying more. Um, and we came up with this number of $39 per month. You really can't beat it to get access to coding, some trading, design, game development. You come explore it all. And when you're ready to go full, like fully down one of these paths, you can upgrade to a specific path. So for example, if you start off paying $39.99 a month, you take our cybersecurity classes that come with the Explore membership. If you say, you know what, I'm ready to become a full cybersecurity expert, I want the full path, you can upgrade and you can become our cybersecurity member as well. Um, at the same time, you could be making money over in our day trading community. Each one of these communities is separated and you get to say bounce around and go to each one or tag and do both at the same time. It depends. I wouldn't suggest that you learn how to do uh, game development and Python coding at the same time. Maybe you just focus on game development and then in a couple months you do some Python. But some things can be paired together really, really well. OK, so you can reach out to us at any time as you're a member. You'll have coaches all around you. Just ask those questions and we get you right. All right. Really quick, uh, the seven keys to success. S stands for skills. That's what we really focus on first, making sure that we give you uh, relevant skills that you can use today going into the 2030s and 2040s, okay? Unity, we have to do this together, right? We are gonna see each other at the top, so we might as well work, work together on our way up, okay? Creativity, we're not getting into this trying to be like anybody else. Bring your uniqueness. We all shine individually, okay? But we come together with that unity and we shine even brighter. Um, counseling. Remember, we talked about the holistic approach. We all know you may be a very, very smart person, but if you're going through some things mentally or emotionally, we want to be there to help you get out of those cages, okay? Um, of course, economics. Tomorrow is my favorite day of Kwanzaa. It's uh, Ujama, which stands for Cooperative Economics. And I just love to see people working together to reach financial freedom, okay? So that's something big that we talk about a lot when it comes to unlocking uh, FinTech, trading, investing, six-figure jobs, benefits, work from home opportunities. We not plan. How do you get multiple streams of income out of one tech skill, okay? Um, and then the last two S's stand for storytelling, which we all know is one of the most important ways to inspire people and make people take action. So we definitely fully take like take uh, full heed when it comes to that. And spirituality is the foundation of everything. So um, we bring our soul, we put our back into this. This is nothing like superficial. We serious about what we talk about here. All right. So on that note, I wanna do one more thing and just talk to you about our coaches, okay? Talk to you a little bit about our coaches. Um, I'm gonna go through these really quick. So that way we can get, yes, 8, 11, about 10 minutes after the hour. Um, I want you guys to get a great session with Coach Zach. Um, speaking of Coach Zach, as you see, he's right here on the list. 
Uh, this is our futuristic and Web3 coach. Also, like I said, very, very heavy on design. So he's going to be bringing that flavor tonight. Um, he's always been ahead of his time, excuse me. So jumping into Web3 is right up his alley. Uh, he, he knows how to create virtual spaces, operating in the metaverse, and he was built for this. So excited to bring him on board. Um, I'll be talking to you guys when you become members of our Explore Path about coding and also the basics of trading. Coach Greg is a student success coach, so he'll be on your heels to make sure that you are getting everything you need to be successful. Um, we also got other success coaches as well, Coach Nicole and Coach uh, Craig. Once again, man, like everybody's really super passionate about making sure that you as a student get the uh, attention that you need. And then us as professors and coaches, they on our heels making sure that we deliver in what we said we will deliver. So um, I really appreciate them for being on the team. We got JJ.Digital. She helps out when it comes to the youth as far as coding. Uh, we got Winston and Julian, who are our gaming team. They teach how to build video games for iOS or for consoles. Corey, he teaches gaming as well, but from a different perspective. So if you have a kid who's interested in becoming a pro gamer, whether that's streaming or tournaments, um, this is the guy you want to talk to. So when we say, hey, members, we're having a pro gaming session this week, sign your kids up. If you're a member, you already have free access to that session. OK, Jen is our cybersecurity coach. She will be showing you guys how to get into the industry, whether it's about certifications or how to build projects to get you ready for those interviews. And once again, you need no prior experience to take any of these sessions. Our coaches start you from scratch, hold your hand, hands on, get you to where you need to be. OK, and that's confident. That's where we want you to be, to feel confident, to walk into these spaces and say, I understand NFTs because I did a couple sessions with boss or I understand how drones can be coded because of the boot camp I did with Chantel. Or I understand that as a trader, I have to think a certain way because of my sessions with Jay Barr, who talks to me about discipline and risk management. OK, so we got a full team. Uh, we got coding from Coach Tory. We got app development from Coach Corey, and then we also have day trading strategies from Coach Bobby, okay? And if that's not enough, we got tutoring for you with Coach Olufemi. He's on Slack. He can answer any of your coding questions. I don't know how he does it. This man knows like 10 different languages, and he's in a whole nother country, but he still deliver delivers when it comes to impact and helping students, okay? And shout out to Sammy and Jay for helping out on the social media side. They make sure that what we do internally gets put out there so you guys can see what you're missing out on and give you heads up on any upcoming events. So when we say on social media, explore members, you have an event this week on Thursday, we're going to be talking about design or next Monday, we're going to be talking about drones. Make sure you register, take advantage, free access because you're a member. Okay. All right. So out of all of those sessions that I just talked about, right? All of those coaches, try to pick one or two. What are you most excited to learn when it comes to exploring uh, these different tech roles at Unlock Academy? Type one, two at the most. We got cyber, we got pro gaming. We got trading, we got web three. And if you got some for your kids, you can mention some for your kids too. I'll give you that. We got African history for show. And man said coding and trading. Devon said Web3. Aylin said day trading. Hella value. Yes. Yes, hella value. And one more time, tribe, type in the chat. How much is this membership again? How much is this membership? Remind us. If you've been listening, let me know. How long has this, how much are we asking for? And once again, we fair. Every one of these coaches you see on here, is being reimbursed for their time. All of this software we pay for out of our pocket. All of our donations that we do to that y'all see these public giveaways we do all come out of your membership dues. Your membership is not only just for you to learn an NFT class. It's to learn all of these classes, but also to build this community. We're not funded by any venture capitalists. We didn't do any crowdfunding. All of this is because of you as a member, okay? Exactly. $39.99 a month, basically a, a couple of streaming platforms. That's it. And you get so much value. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, y'all was listening. Y'all was listening. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring on the one and the only Zach Patton. Okay. I'm going to make him uh, I'm a host so that way he can come on here with y'all. And uh, I don't know how many people know this, but just a quick fun fact. Zach is actually my brother. All right. This is my blood brother. All right. So um, you may you may hear or see some resemblances. And uh, that's just because we family all the way. Hey, what's up, bro? Can you hear me? Appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. Um, I just try to start my video, but <clears throat> I think I'm gonna need permission from you. Okay, I just made you whole, so try it again. There we go. Yes, yes. Okay. Good to see you. Yes. Happy Wednesday, everybody. This is exciting. Yes. Yes. Oh man, and today is uh U Ujima Collective Work and Responsibility. So thank you for helping out teaching this session tonight. We appreciate you on behalf of all the coaches. Hey, this is just what we do. It's a lifestyle, right? Yes, yes, you know, yes. I, I love getting in with the tribe because, you know, uh, y'all just come with the energy. And, um, you know, sometimes speaking and teaching can be daunting, but the tribe is so supportive um, that it makes yeah. it fun. Yeah. Um, so, Twan, I wanted to build on something that you said when you had first started. You were talking about, um, we were talking about holistic. And okay. you know, that is an underlying philosophy with everything that we do with um, the Unlock Academy and stuff that we going on, we have going on outside of Unlock Academy. So um, I wanted to dive into that a little bit more, what it, what holist tech really means to us. Thank you. And, you know, what it really is, is about uh, design, you know, funny, designing our life and designing how we teach, designing how we learn as a natural and fluid extension of who we are. You know, we're coming from the you know public education system, the public school system that pretty much says, you know, I don't care what you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your family situation. I don't care about none of that. This is the box that you need to fit into. So to um, to break out of that and to be able to build frameworks, that's like, no, we're taking into consideration who you are. You know, when we teach you, it's so powerful. And I think that that's how. That's how we've won, you know, as a, as a team, as a family, as a unit. Um, so to build this into a philosophy, to share it uh, is like is like an honor and it's exciting. And I know that it's going to that mentality going to outlive all of us, you know. Mm -hmm. We meet you where you are to get you where you're trying to go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's go. Well, appreciate I you, man. I uh, hope you already tried. Zach about to go in. I'm excited. I'm, I'll be right here watching with y'all. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you, bro. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, today, guys, we're going to be talking about uh, what's called design thinking. Um, please let me know if you can see my my screen. Just hit me with an unlock in the chat. Once I can get the chat back, there we go. My bad, y'all. I just want to bring the chat back up, so I'm not. Reviews. Okay, we'll figure it out. Okay, so guys, I wanted to start the session with a quote from a very prominent 21st century design, or excuse me, philosopher. Um, he said, I'm self-made, meaning I design myself. And I wanted to start with that because it's so powerful. And I think it's powerful because um, when he says I design myself, you know, he's talking about intention. And what he's saying is, you know, what you see, what you're experiencing, uh, the way that I'm showing up, that was by design. That was intentional. I put thought behind this. This didn't just happen. Uh, there are no coincidences. And, you know, that is really the core the, the baseline philosophy of um, holistic thinking and design thinking that, hey, like, no, we can control outcomes and we can, um, you know, put in our own input and affect the reality around us. And that starts with ourself. So I wanted to talk more about uh, the holistic philosophy of design. So just to give you guys a little bit of background on myself, um, I've been designing my entire life. 
uh, it just took about maybe 20 years or so for me to actually recognize and, and call out the fact that what I was doing was design or that I'm a designer. Um, and it's interesting because the, the word design has been uh, a bit corrupted. Um, I would love if I get some feedback from you guys. I'm going to stop sharing for one second so I can get the uh, chat back. And I would love it if you guys could put in the chat some words that you think of or maybe some images that you think of when you hear the word design or you hear the word designer. I'll give you guys a second. Neka said, empty canvas. Thank you. Thank you. Creator, visual, pyramids, create, someone who creates, UX, image, fashion. Yep. <laughs> yep. Fashion. Vision. Okay. Alchemist. Yep. Statement, style, abstract art. Yep. I see y'all could go on all night. Okay. Great. So, what all these things have in, in common is that element of creation, right? developer same thing creation you know we're developing something that could set my daughter you know right conceiving humans that's creation so i'm going to share my screen again thank you guys so what's interesting is we think about these things when we hear design and it really is just the essence of creation so you know what really inspired me to start teaching design you know on top of you know um my my friends and family really pushing me and encouraging me inspiring me to teach was uh i would i would hear a phrase sometimes and it would really like irk me to my core and that phrase like you know people would say to me oh zach you're so creative uh i wish i could do that or that's so cool but i'm not creative and guys like I can't tell you what that does to my aura when I hear those words, because like I said, you know, the essence of what it means to to design or be a designer has been corrupted. And we think that creativity is some type of personality quirk or some type of personality trait. So what I say to those people is, hey, I mean, look outside or don't, you don't have to look outside, look around you. And I promise that nothing that you see was built or as a result of some type of personality trait but that the idea of being a designer or being a creator like we just talked about in the chat is hard-coded in our dna so to be human is to be super creative you can't have one without the other it's not a trait it's not something that you can acquire it's definitely something you can cultivate it's definitely something that you can work on so to be human is to be a designer but we kind of assign the word designer creator to those that have simply accepted the responsibility of their creativity. But that doesn't mean that if you haven't accepted responsibility, that's any less creative because that's not true. This is humanity that we're talking about. So going back to holistic design, let's talk about a couple principles. So number one, there's no limit to human creativity. You know, Again, this is Unlock Academy. We're very uh, connected to our, our history and to our ancestors. And I feel like every day I'm learning more about what, my, what our ancestors uh, were capable of, what they did, how they lived, the technology that they had. And I'm like, wow, okay. So there's, this stuff really, there's no limit. There's no ceiling um, to what we can do. You know, again, we just need to uncover the power, you know, that we already have. So we have to first establish and really believe that there is no limits to what we can do and you know what our brains are capable of number two like i was just saying everybody's a designer i don't want to hear it i don't want to hear i'm not creative i don't want to hear oh i'm not artistic i don't want to hear um i don't have a creative bone in my body because this is not true this is a lie that again the school system told us that we uh you know internalized even by creating this idea of art class and, you know, that kind of being looked at as like, a, oh, art class is for art students and not something like, oh, that's for everybody, you know, like math, like science, like everybody had to take those because they matter in life. So everybody is a designer. Number three, 
Design is to be used to improve quality of life and serve community. This one is so huge. I can't even, I can't even harp on it too much. There would be no point in creating anything, doing anything, working any job, getting out of bed in the morning, if it wasn't to improve either your quality of life or that of your community, be it local or global. So that's what we're doing as designers. We're solving problems and we're creating value. So how exactly is value created? Value is created when we recognize a problem or a pain point a human or a group of humans are having, and we just get to work going to solve that. And once it's solved, a value has been created for the human. Their, their quality of life has now been elevated, either be it by something that's barely noticeable or some type of huge quantum leap in, uh, in the human quality of life, the human experience. The scale hardly matters because it doesn't matter. This is all scalable. So remember that we are solving problems for people and we are serving community always. Number four, design is a team sport. Another one that I cannot stress enough. Once again, popular culture kind of has created a situation where we kind of have cults around certain design figures. It could be a Steve Jobs or a Virgil Abloh or, um, you know, any type of different designer. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, creative, but just different from different fields. There are these, you know, messiahs of design. You know, Elon Musk might be another one where he can kind of attach his name to different things that he does. But, you know, we all know that Elon, you know, really couldn't do anything without his design teams, without his engineers and without the people that work for him. So no matter what, you know, solving that problem, creating value for people is always going to be a team sport. It's always going to to be a process of designers, people that are putting in the work, people that are trying to solve the problem. The people with the problem, aka the affected community or impacted community, and then usually the stakeholders, which could be people not necessarily affected, but might also be um, maybe indirectly affected or want to be involved or institutional stakeholders. So it's a conversation. It's a conversation. It's an iterative process. And then number five, mindfulness over mindlessness, act with intention. So again, all day, every day, all we're doing is interacting with other people's designs. My computer, my phone, my home, my car, my neighborhood, my shopping centers, uh, my shower, my food, my refrigerator. We can go on all day. It doesn't matter. It, it's designed. It was designed. That being said, as a designer, you know that I'm producing things that are going to go out into the world and have an effect on people. So we have a moral obligation as designers to think about, again, the community, because that's all we're doing. That's all that's all we're serving. And how is what I'm producing going to impact or affect them? It could be something very complicated, like a train system. So we just got a new train that opened up here in LA uh, called the K-Line. Very long process from what I understand. Um, billions of dollars spent. And it was interesting, you know, beautiful train, you know, they did a great job. But it was funny because I was there on opening day and I go down there and like right away, I'm starting to notice stuff like, wow, like I would have did this differently. Um, that's interesting. That's kind of counterintuitive. I'm, I wonder how people are going to respond to that. So me having you know, that design mind frame, I'm noticing things about my environment and how they could be a little bit better. So, you know, a train, that's not anything light. That's not like light matter. That's not child's play. That's something that millions of people are going to ride. That's people's life at stake. That's people's safety at stake. So there's so many things that has to have been taken into consideration when they went and built that train. So if the designers that built that train just kind of said, well, I'm just going to do it, you know, my way, I like it like this. Um, I'm not really thinking about what the community wants. This is just how I want my train to look. You know, that train is going to fail. And again, you might be putting people at risk. So please remember that like mindfulness is everything. 
And this now goes into the, the entire holistic lifestyle because the, the culture that we kind of live in right now really uh, incentivizes mindless behavior, whether it's kind of just scrolling on social media or just kind of, you know, which we all do. We, you know, check the box that we say we agree of the terms and conditions when we haven't read it. And, you know, it's not feasible to read those things. So that's obviously no shame to us. But to me, that's a design flaw. How about show me something that I could actually ingest and understand so that I can make an informed decision and agree? So that's not our our fraud problem. That's not our fault. That's the, the issue of the designers who are probably at the mercy of the legal team at that business and say, no, we're just going to do it like this. But we have to, as designers and people that want to elevate our design skills, we have to break out of that and regain consciousness. And understand, no, like, again, going back to I'm self-made, meaning I design myself. No, I have to think about this. I have to think about what I'm doing. You know, even if I'm just designing a T-shirt or um, a graphic that's going to go on a billboard, I have a responsibility. I can't um, just put anything up there. I might, I could offend people. I could turn off the very people that I'm trying to help. So I have to, I have to always be mindful of what I'm doing. And treat it, you know, just like driving, you know, when you're driving, it's not just about you, you're driving for yourself, you're driving for your passengers, and you're driving for the other drivers and uh, pedestrians. So once again, that is a community based activity, just like design. So up here, I put state your purpose. So before you get started with your design, you always want to know, what am I doing this for? That's so important. And you have to keep that at the forefront of what you're doing the whole way. Because should you lose while you're doing it, your whole product is washed. And whatever that is, like I said, that could be a system, that could be a piece of machinery, that could be a t-shirt, it could be anything. But you got to know what your purpose is. Let me check the chat real quick. I really wish I could check the chat and share my screen, but I can't. Appreciate y'all. feel like I'm overly creative. That's what's up. That's what I like to hear. Okay, I'm gonna go back to share my screen. Okay, so let's define design. What is design? Design is a plan or drawing produced to show the look and function of a thing before it is built or made. So a couple words there. Let's deduce it down a little bit into just the key elements, which I kind of started here with plan and thing. So what is design? We have a vision. We have a plan for the vision, and then we go build it. And this can be applied to literally anything. There are so many different types of designers out there. There are curriculum designers that actually design educational curriculums. There are engineers that once again, design roads and trains and bridges and uh, cellular structures and th these types of things. There's uh, software designers and developers that obviously deal with software. Uh, the different social media apps we use, the different uh, delivery apps we use are all done by software designers. Um, we got product designers. That could be somebody that designs uh, sneakers or a lamp. Um, so, so many different types of designers out there, but they all follow a, a relatively the same basic blueprint of design. So now what is a designer? So a designer is an intelligent being with a vision of creation, acting with intention to bring it into reality. I'm going to hit y'all with that one more time. A designer is an intelligent being with a vision of creation, acting with intention to bring it into reality. So going back to that idea of, oh, I'm not a designer or oh, I'm not creative. By this definition, I, I, I truly can't imagine anybody, you know, walking this earth that does not have some level of intelligence, has never had a vision, and has never brought anything into reality. Even if it was, you know, children, anything. 
So by this definition, humans are designers. Second shot. Mecca said, as a parent designer, I feel we have a unique design responsibility in crafting the best possible human we can. Oh, man, I couldn't agree more. I'm going to read that again. As a parent, and she put in parentheses designer, I feel we have a unique design responsibility in crafting the best possible human we can. Mecca, I couldn't agree more. So again, as you get situated in a design mindset and design mind frame when you go outside and you interact with the world you would stop taking things so personally that you don't like or that you don't agree with and you'll just simply recognize it as well that's a that's just a, that's a terrible design that's a bad design or or you know if you're what if you're a developer you're a coder you could easily look at a program and say oh this this isn't this wasn't coded the right way this is this is this is poor coding. This is poor programming. You know, it's, it's not a bad idea, but we need to do it a little bit better. So to NECA's point, yeah, as, as parents, anybody that on here that's a parent, yeah, we are designing a life. We are designing a child that's going to then go out there and create other experiences or create experiences for others just through interaction. So, you know, that's huge responsibility. So when we go outside and we don't like what we see, a lot of times I'm like, oh man, that's just bad parenting. <laughs> For me, I don't know, maybe not everybody feels that way, but I find myself saying that a lot, like, oh man, like, you know, I think that person probably could have been brought up a little bit different or that person maybe could have been given, you know, some, a different set of values and that's design. So Nick, I appreciate that. Going back to the screen. So again, intelligent being, vision, intention, bringing it into reality. Okay, so as a designer or as designers, whenever we are building anything at all, I don't care, anything we have at our disposal, at our disposal and we are ultimately at the mercy of, I shouldn't say at the mercy, but we have at our disposal uh, three different types of intelligence, which I have here on the screen. So the first one, and obviously the most important, because we wouldn't be here without it, is uh, higher intelligence. So this skull here is the design of a higher intelligence, you know, higher than us, you know. So some intelligent being decided and crafted the shape of this large bone we call a skull and the rest of the bones that are attached and had to take into consideration so many different things, be it the environment we were going to be placed in, the other animals that we would be surrounded by, the type of food that we were going to eat. These are all, this is all data that was taken into consideration when the higher intelligence was designing this product that we call the human body. So we can pull from that higher intelligence. Then there is human intelligence. That's us. That's what we're doing right now. That's what this webinar is. Um, um, here I have um, an ancient Mayan pyramid. Uh, to me, this is human intelligence and human creativity at its finest because, uh, you know, the pyramids really show us, you know, what the what our ancient ancestors were capable of and the level at which they thought. And to me, that goes back to consciousness. So we can we can harness human intelligence can harness higher intelligence. Just by harnessing our own consciousness. And again, that comes from acting intentionally and thinking. You know, our brains are so powerful and they're very complicated structures that, you know, as we all know, we under, we tend to underutilize. Um, but it is there for us to utilize. And when we do, wonderful things happen. And now the newest and maybe the most controversial uh, source of intelligence is machine intelligence. 
So um, this is a little picture from that Lenza AI app that everybody was going nuts over about two weeks ago. Um, maybe still, maybe people still are. Um, I thought it, it, I thought it was producing some pretty cool images. I thought that was cool. Um, now Lenza is sort of, you know, obviously AI, and it is sort of the uh, manifestation of, at least as far as the tech industry goes, you know, where they're at as far as machine intelligence and machine learning. So it's supposed to be like a, hey, look at what our AI can do. That's what, what it was really all about. Um, and again, I imagine Lens is, you know, a pretty complicated program. But machine intelligence, we can also deduce that to something a little bit smaller. So I'll give you guys a little example. I'm going to open up one of my design tools in uh, Photoshop. One second. Let's stop this. I'll be back. Here we go. Cool. So I hope y'all can see my screen. What we have here is a blue circle in this white box, which is our canvas. So if I'm a designer and I need to make sure for the sake of my design and for the sake of my community, that this blue circle needs to be dead center of my white space or my white canvas. So unfortunately, my human intelligence and my my optical capabilities, again, my technology, my natural technology, can make it very difficult. Even if I even if I scroll in, right? I'm not quite sure if this is dead center, which again, my entire design depends on this. I, I can't just wing it because that would be, I would be relinquishing my moral responsibilities. So I have to make sure that this is dead center. So that's where machine intelligence would come in. Again, this is Adobe Photoshop. You see, I'm starting to move the circle around a little bit, and I'm getting these pink lines at the top left to right and bottom. And it's kind of giving me an idea of what it's lining up to in the white space. So these pink lines right here, these vertical ones, are letting me know, hey, I'm center. And I'm going to go down a little bit, maybe up. Okay. So the pink lines let me know that I'm center. I can test that by drawing a little rectangle here. That should be a different color. Okay. Center. So it was the machine intelligence of Photoshop that let me know through this pink re rectangle that, hey, you're right on the money. Okay, great. So yeah, just to reiterate, when we're designing all three of these types of intelligence we have at our disposal. And we should utilize them in every scenario. Every scenario, we should be we should be deciding, we should be determining, okay, what piece of my design is going to be higher intelligence? What's going to be my human intelligence? And where can I lean on a machine? You know, I know with AI, there is a narrative that, you know, AI is taking over and, you know, this and that. I don't have to go through that whole uh, narrative. Um, and I don't even want to speak on that. What I do want to speak on is that, you know, intelligent machines can be here for us and are here for us and for our benefit. So just like we are an extension of the higher intelligence, the machine intelligence is, is an extension of us. It's not our competition. Computers for ever have only done what humans have instructed them to do. 
they can just do it really well, whatever it is. So keep in mind these tools. So everything is by design. Design is not an area of study, rather the plans for reality itself. So I just wanna remind you guys again, when you go outside and you walk down the street, no matter where in the world you live, unless, no, I can't even say that. Anywhere in the world you live, whether you live in Antarctica or you live in New York City, you live in Atlanta, you live in uh, Russia, you know, your experience walking down the street and interacting with the world is a result of designers and designers designing systems and environments for people to exist in for better or for worse. And, you know, that's why with whole with uh, holistic design and that philosophy, you know, we really harp on, again, that responsibility because we're talking about people's life and people's experience on earth. So never think anything is just a random or some type of random outcome or, you know, they like to say the big bang or something like that. Um, no, no, no. Mo you know, almost everything that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis uh, there was an, an, an unbelievable amount of uh, foresight and intention that went into that machine or that thing, whatever it is. So everything is by design. If there's one takeaway that I want you guys to take away from tonight is that one, we're all designers and that two, everything is by design. So in life, it's designed is one of those things that you just cannot escape. It's everywhere. It's all around us. So now design thinking, right? So what is design thinking? So design thinking is a process. So with the with holistic design philosophy, that is a like a code of conduct, a belief system. Whereas design thinking is the tool or the lifestyle that we use to uh, design and to build and to solve problems. It's essentially our kitchen. It's our tools uh, that we use to bring out, bring our vision into fruition. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, the design thinking process real quick. I just want to check the chat. As above, so below. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Okay, design thinking, like I said, it's a process. And at that, it's a never ending process. Design and the work of a designer is never done. I don't care. I don't care what you're designing because once you stop, you're dead. Once the universe stops expanding, it's dead. Once a species stops evolving, it's dead. So when you look at this flow chart, you see it's in an infinity, that figure eight, because it's forever. We always iterate. We always look for new problems. We always try to improve quality of life. So I want to talk with you guys a little bit about um, the process of design thinking and what it really entails. And then, you know, once we get you guys into Explore Path and we go deeper into our, our workshops and our courses, we're going to be diving deeper into um, design thinking and then different ways in, in life that we can apply that. So design thinking can be applied to virtually every situation where people are experiencing a problem. Once again, I can't stress those last couple uh, words enough where people are experiencing a problem. As a designer, no matter what you what you build, no matter what you launch, it's going that product or whatever it is is going to fit in you know that pyramid that we call Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's going to be that's is going to be uh, satisfying somebody's needs somewhere for something, a pain point, an itch, a uh, discomfort, um, a problem in any way, shape, or form. So to solve that, the first thing we have to do 
is empathize. We have to understand people. And this is where interviews and data and, and speaking to people comes in. You have to paint the picture of the person that you want to help. You have to understand exactly what their problem is. When do they experience this problem? Why are they experiencing this problem? And ultimately, what, what are the long-term ramifications of this problem being unaddressed? Or what is the potential value that can be created if this problem is addressed? So once we empathize with our community, the people that we want to help, then, okay, we scale that down and we say, okay, so what, we, we hear what your problem is. Now, as a designer, we have to take that to the next level as the, the, the surface level under, the, excuse me, the level under the surface. So if I say, I'm really having trouble sleeping and every time I, I wake up, I'm so uncomfortable. So, okay, we understand that our, our community, our user is uncomfortable and is having trouble sleeping. In our next phase, in the defined phase, we have to figure out why. We, under, we understand how they're feeling. Now we have to say why. We have to study the problem. We have to study our community more and say, what is the root of this problem? And that's exactly where we're going to get to the next part of the process, which is ideate. We define what the problem is. The problem is uh, beds, you know, the way beds are usually built or mattresses are usually built. Um, it doesn't really work with human ph physiology. Going back to our, our, our example of not being able to sleep or being uncomfortable. So ideate, ideate, that's to, uh, for me personally, I think ideation is probably my favorite process um, or step in the design process because it's where real creativity uh, comes in and peeks its head in. So this is where we generate our ideas. And what's cool about ideate is, you know, this idea of deferred judgment and rapid prototyping and rapid idea generation. The reason we wanna do it rapidly is so that we wanna create as many ideas as possible, as fast as possible. And we do that by deferring judgment. What does deferring judgment mean? You know, again, going back to school, if, uh, you know, our teacher asks us a question, or, you know, they're talking about something, we're not really sure if we get it, or we think we know the answer, but we're too afraid of being wrong to even guess or to even, you know, say what we what, what our belief is. So think about how many, I, what that's costing us. What's that, what that's costing us as a species, people keeping their mouth shut, people not bringing their ideas to the forefront, even if they're not developed, that doesn't matter. The point is that it's an evolving process so we can always build. So when we defer judgment, we say there are no stupid answers. There are no, uh, there are no bad contributions contributions in this process when we get together with other designers and we get together with our stakeholders and we get together with our community. We need all hands on deck. We need all ideas on deck. So if I say, um, you know, there's too many uh, stray animals in my neighborhood, you know, that's the problem. And when we're ideating, I could easily say, okay, one thing that I would do is I would I would walk around with a basket or maybe some type of wagon and I would put all the, the stray animals um, in my basket and I would just walk them to the animal shelter. So for a lot of reasons, that sounds like a terrible idea. That could, that could just not work for many different reasons. Like what if I pull up on a Rottweiler or something like, I'm not picking up a Rottweiler and putting it in my basket and thinking I'm gonna make it home because I probably won't. Depending on, you know, if it's a stray, you know, not to stigmatize animals or anything. But the point is, that's okay. Put the idea out there. We're rapidly generating um, ideas. And we can decide later whether it's feasible or not. Again, deferred. So later, we're putting that, that judgment. We're going to do, we're going to do that later. Right now, we need to load our clip up. We need to load our arsenal with ideas. So that's a lot of fun because it allows you to just kind of be silly 
um, not have to worry about being wrong, not have to worry about breaking anything, because I know we talked a lot about, hey, big responsibility, which is true. But that's the part of the process where, hey, like, no, let's just let's just get it out there. Then we prototype, uh, you know, creation, creation and experimentation. We say, OK, like we go through our our um, our ideas and we say, OK, out of all these. I like uh, I like ideas two, six and twenty four. So let's let's build on that a little bit. Let's build out some prototypes for these ideas, put them out and see what does the best. So we go, we grab our design tools, we grab our technology. And we go make some prototypes, or we go implement some prototypes in the community, whatever it is. Then we wait. So this gray bar here, that's our uh, test phase. This is all about refining the product. So the first thing that we do is we put it out to the community that we're trying to affect, to the people that we're trying to improve. And we see how they respond. We ask questions. Sometimes we ask questions. Sometimes we just sit back and peep game. You know, with a lot of software applications that we use, um, you know, if you notice, like a lot of the big companies, like when's the last time Amazon reached out to you and said, hey, how's our, uh, you know, how can we improve our app or Netflix? Like, how can we improve your experience? Usually they don't because it's software, so they can automate a lot of this stuff, meaning they can just look at people's behavior on their prototype and say, okay, that did not have the desired outcome. That did have the desired outcome. Okay, well, let, what if we put this button over here? What if we changed out, you know, this color scheme because maybe it's a little offensive to our, our target demographic and go with a, a different color scheme? Okay, now we're getting the results that we want. Okay, great. And then guys, it starts all over again. We go back to empathize. What's the problem? Have we fixed the problem at all? Have we eased the problem at all? Okay, so we've eased the problem a little bit. So let's go a little bit deeper. What's the problem? Okay, well, let's ideate. Let's get those ideas out. Let's load the clip. All right, y'all, let's update the, the prototype. Okay, great. Let's get it out there. Let's wait. Forever. Forever. It doesn't stop. I'm sure like, you know, I got my phone here. You know, you can go on Google Images and, and check, you know, Apple products from, from the 90s. And, you know, that's my favorite because Apple was failing in the 90s. You know, if anybody didn't know, they were about three months from bankruptcy before um, Steve Jobs came back. And, you know, uh, Apple can contribute that, that, that close to failure experience due to poor design, poor organizational design, but also poor product design. If you go on Google... And and Google Apple products from the nineties. That's not that's not it. They weren't they were not getting the job done. Um, you know, so we went from those designs and Apple failing to you know this design and Apple being you know a multi trillion dollar company, and that's that's through through design and Steve Jobs coming back and and really just focusing on his design team and saying, okay, hey, we need to focus on a couple products that can change people's life. You know, so this is the design process. This is the design thinking process. This is the process that we will always go through no matter what. 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now, humans will be using this process to make sure we're building things that will have a positive impact on people. And again, being a designer is just about living more intentionally. So a holistic design Again, it's about that moral principle of, you know, what effect is my design going to have? And that can be applied to, of course, community-based design, like we talked about, but also personal design. And that's not something I don't think um, I, I see or hear get talked about uh, too often. You know, a lot of times we hear about, um, you know, designer clothes or designer shoes or UX design or um, product design. And Again, all very important. You can't get away from design. But how about life design? Like, how is my life set up? How is my life designed? How is my the life of my family designed? How is my my work designed? How is my my learning experiences designed? How is my culture designed? Is it working for me or not? You know, every day you can wake up or before you go to bed and look around and say, is this working for me or not? 
well, this is working for me. Cool. This is not working for me. So what I need to do is figure out why is this not working for me and apply that design thinking mentality so I can solve my own problem. And we, a lot of times we underestimate the power of that design that we can apply and have an effect on our own life. And when we do that, we're acting more intentionally. And my personal belief is that's going to, that's going to elevate the experience uh, on earth in general. When we're always thinking about how can we improve? Let me check the chat again. Oh, Empathy VR, yep. Awesome. Maslow is thorough. Let's go. Appreciate y'all. So we talked about holistic design being a mindset and a lifestyle, like a way of life. Now let's talk about attitude, right? Again, we have to first believe, we, it starts with our beliefs. We are designers, we are creative beings. So then once we believe something, that's gonna affect how we speak and how we come out into the world and how we speak and how we show up in the world defines our attitude. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about the attitude of a designer. And the attitude of a designer is very much so similar to the attitude of a scientist. It's all about curiosity. You know, we don't, we don't get attached to anything. We're not, we don't jump to conclusions. We're not quick to draw conclusions. We're, we're curious. We are interested. So a few things that designers might say is like, how might we? You know, how might me statements are, are huge in, in the design world. You know, how might we um, increase revenue? How might we increase uh, usage? How might we bring down um, reincarceration rates? How might we, um, how might we increase uh, graduation rates? So when we ask ourselves how our brain immediate, again, this is just by design. That's that natural intelligence we were talking about, the higher intelligence. Our brain is set up to respond to questions differently than we respond to statements. If there's a statement, if we make a statement, if I speak a statement out of my life right after that statement is done, my brain has put a bow on it and I'm on to the next thing. It's a statement. That's it. When I ask a question, my mind opens up. My mind opens up to possibilities. My mind opens up to uh, suggestions. My mind opens up to um, different scenarios. So we always want to say, how might we do this? Uh, what if? Um, this can be improved. How can I help? This is my favorite because once again, you know, the corruption of design, um, especially the word designer, you know, we can think about with, you know, fashion and consumption and exclusivity and having things that other people don't have and flexing and that whole culture. But true design is the complete opposite. It's, it's being humble and saying, how can I help you? I understand that you have this problem. What, what can I do? You know, how can I, how can I use my creativity to make your life a little bit better? You know, and that's a, that's a very, that's a very humble attitude to have, but that pays off through the design process. Um, I would love your feedback. Same thing. We're deferring judgment. We're not getting too self-conscious about our work. We're not thinking about that. We're not thinking about being judged. We want to make the best work. We want to produce the best system. We want to design the best graphic. We want to uh, write the best code. So we need feedback to do that. I need to go and ask my partners, my community, my family, hey, just tell me what you think about this. You know, and as a designer of, like I said, my whole life, um, my, my entire career has just been an iterative process. Hey, Zach, I love this, but how about this? Or, you know what? No, you know, I know you can do better. Or, um, oh, this is great. You know, um, this is great. You know, uh, you can print that. 
whatever it is, you know, so if I hear you can print that, okay, you know, the community or the representatives of the community are happy. So great. Now from there, I just focus on improving throughout the future. Um, let's try again, being explorative, being creative, being uh, curious, being okay with taking risks, embracing the unknown. We don't know. Let's try this. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not sure, but I kind of want to see. Um, I wonder what would happen if, once again, that creates that uh, curiosity, that uh, being willing to, that being willing to uh, take risks and uh, experiment. And I put um, two feelings <laughs> for a designer. Um, it's it's probably not this binary, but if you really broke it down, it is. Um, designers feel inspired or we feel stuck. And, you know, this can be second by second, minute by minute, or it could be going for weeks or months. I could go and, you know, this is again, coming from personal experience. I could go months of feeling inspired, of being creative, of feeling in alignment with what I'm doing, followed by months of feeling stuck, like, man, okay, now what? I'm really not sure what to do. And that's the point that you're going to run into a problem because you are you are problem solving. So we're not supposed to shy away from problems. That's not what we do. So if you're feeling stuck, that's OK. Keep working until you feel inspired, until you're eventually going to break through that wall and be like, oh, OK, new playing field. Let's keep it rocking. Now you're inspired. Next thing you know, you hit another brick wall. Okay, you know what? I didn't expect this. And this is a little bit harder than I thought. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to get back to it. You feel stuck forever. So these are normal feelings. That's something that you should be comfortable with. That should be something that you should get used to. And once again, deferred judgment is not anything to shy away from at all. Problem solvers. Being stuck is half the process. It's also where you can challenge holes in your project. 100. Thank you, Neca. Couldn't agree more. Because if, you know, if there's a problem, the problem is there for a reason. And, um, you know, I myself am learning a programming language right now called C. And it is, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, the more modern languages like Python, like, um, like uh, JavaScript, like uh, C Sharp, C++, the gaming, the game encoding um, languages um, are based on this language C. It was developed, I want to say, in the 70s. But I decided to learn C because I believe that it'll make me a better designer or excuse me, a better developer, a, develop, a, a better coder. And um, what's so challenging about learning C is that the it's so nuanced, whereas um, you know, other programming languages, because they're more advanced, they might cut you some slack or make things easier, or maybe they can autocorrect something. With C, you got to be so on point. I'm talking about I'm trying to run a program and I can't figure it out. And I'm spending hours trying to figure out why this program won't run. Oh, because I forgot a little semicolon at the at the at the end of line 26. Like, wow. OK, like that's crazy. So. But it's making me a better designer and it's making me embrace problem solving and it's making me a pay, pay more attention to detail. And again, it puts me in a humbling attitude where it's like, I know the computer is not wrong. It is a very, very slim chance that my computer or Visual Studio code is wrong or that there's some type of bug. It's most likely me. And all I got to do is find it and figure it out and I can go from there. So with Explore and our Explore path, you know, I'm going to be doing um, a few different type of workshops on a weekly basis with our students. Um, with design, again, it, it covers such a, a vast, um, just like a vast catalog of thought. Um, so I want to break that down into a few things that I think that we can use to have a practical application on our life and in our work. Um, so I have... Um, design thinking and community-based problem solving. That's just a, pretty much just about going deeper into that figure eight we talked about, that design thinking process. 
and applying that to problems within our community. I don't think, once again, when we hear design thinking or we hear design UX design, especially within the broader tech space, we always think software. We always think um, an app or we always think a website. Um, but, you know, with once again, holistic, we know where we come from. We know who we are. And we know we have real problems that affect our life. And we know that those problems are by design. So I want to focus design thinking with specifically with the, this workshop series on identifying problems, you know, that affect our people everywhere and then taking a design, uh, a design thinking approach to create solutions. And it's just going to be a really fun, creative exercise um, for everybody involved and should hopefully reshape how you look at reality when you go outside. And once again, you know, put that courage to say, you know, I walk past uh, I walk past this uh, park every day. And there are things that I don't really like about it. There's things that I do really like about it. But I've always said, well, what does that really have to do with me? I'm just walking by. What can I really do? I can't really affect that park. But design thinking says, no, recognize what's wrong, call it out and, and build a solution. In a situation like you don't like the way your park is lined up in your community or in your neighborhood, of course, you can't go in there yourself and start changing things, but you can bring that to your local municipality. If the problem is maybe trash and debris, you can you can design a, a volunteer network where people just come through every Wednesday and clean up. So there are different ways to plan out your design and implement them depending on the situation. So that's going to be community-based design. That's something I'm super excited about. Um, then we have interfacing, which is the more traditional um, root of the word as far as like, like actual design and going back to our uh, blue circle and getting that getting that center on our, our page. So um, user interface with software, uh, graphic design, um, creating presentations, um, visualizing, um, you know, your idea, you know, maybe you have an idea for, um, you know, a t-shirt, you know, before you go print it, you want to actually bring it to life first visually so that everybody can be on board and say, okay, okay, now let's go print it. Let's go produce it. Let's go make it. So interfacing is all about the technology and using design tools. And then we have uh, web three designing and designing 3D spaces. So personal favorite of mine, I'm going to click off real quick. I want to show you guys something. We're going to be using a um, software called Mozilla Hubs. I'm pulling up one second. Let me check the chat. Our language clarity de definitely is a result of being stuck. Yep. Process, Nicole, it's just two sides of the same coin. Job is similar. Yes, sir, Kevin. Sounds like DT promotes accountability. Kevin, you said you hit the nail right on the head. Design thinking not just promotes accountability, but it embodies it, you know? And I, this is something I'm so passionate about because I, I'll say it again. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I don't care. Like we are subject to other people's design. So, you know, what really, I think, put me onto this as far as the responsibility of design is a lot of the apps that are on our phone and they're not, they're designed to produce a result for the corporation that produced the app and usually not meant to elevate the human experience. So our apps, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and um, you name it, you know, they are riddled with design flaws. They are riddled with design flaws. So how can we hold the designers of, let's say, Twitter accountable if we don't have an understanding of the principles? You know, they probably wouldn't take us seriously or take you seriously or me seriously if I was just complaining about the app, but didn't really understand design, you know? 
because they they're you know a lot of times the bigger companies are going to do what works for them but we need to like i said uh they would if we stopped using their product absolutely so we need to be able to call out hey no like y'all y'all got to do that again we're not accepting it to NECA's point we we should be able to stand on our, our feet and say now nah, y'all this ain't working back to the drawing board you know um the same thing with maybe it's how the app looks but a lot of times it's that algorithm i know you know that's that magic word we talk about a lot those algorithms you know the word algorithm kind of has this connotation of some type of super complicated like computer structure or something but it's really not it's just like a a, a set of instructions that humans feed computers please do this then do this then do this then do this then do this that's all it is so when we understand that we can say yo your algorithm is that design that ain't it you know I, I would like to see this maybe reordered or maybe take that line out um it's not having the desired effect for us so once we can understand our our the language of design um again we're improving the world so going back to uh web three design and, and designing in 3d spaces i wanted to pull up mozilla hubs guys so this is my probably my favorite virtual reality design tool again called mozilla hubs it's a free platform built by mozilla labs and it's all about designing in 3d space so this is you know your everyday run-of-the-mill uh, classroom. So what's so powerful about designing in 3D space is that now we're starting to build these simulations, you know, depending on what our design prompt is, depending on what uh, what it is we're trying to accomplish, right? So for example, as an artist, I make immersive experiences. You know, I like to uh, immerse people in my art and, you know, whatever my vision is for that season or whatever it is. So, um, creating immersive exhibitions is it's expensive it's very um there's a lot of heavy lifting because you're dealing with real materials you're dealing with space so i would use i would leverage some technology like mozilla hubs i would build my room out my space out and i would just get to work literally creating what i plan to create in real life so again this is just a um like a school setup i think i can zoom out and maybe get into so see we're in another room here now this was something that was pre-built probably by the mozilla team um and again super powerful super powerful so what you're seeing here these little ghost guys are actually where users would be uh spawned in virtual reality so if i were to put on my virtual reality headset and come into this room I could come in from the perspective of this guy or this person or this person. And again, Mozilla Hubs is such a versatile, versatile tool. Um, you can use it for so many things. You can use it to plan your wedding. You can use it to redesign your house to determine if, you know, if you want a couch in the southwest corner of your living room or if you want it on the north end of your living room. Um, how, how is that TV going to look on the wall? I'm thinking about painting my uh, my bedroom this this uh, aqua color, but I don't really know how it's going to look with everything else I got. So I can use Mozilla Hubs to go ahead and plan that out. So now we're getting to like a higher like a higher level of design because again we're dealing with with we're 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 creating a third dimension for us to operate in. Like right now we're in we're in three dimensional space. And then I can create a three-dimensional space within my three three-dimensional space that I can then then take out, extract, and then put it out into the real world. And I can do all that via simulation here. So if anything doesn't look right, or if something okay, like I can already tell that that's going to be a problem. You know, virtual reality is you know my favorite tool because it allows us to plan out reality. A lot of times it's it's kind of uh, looked at as like this replacement for reality or this thing that sits on top of reality when my philosophy for what we call the metaverse is a symbiotic relationship 
between these Web3 tools and our real life. I think that, again, due to poor design decisions made by Facebook and Instagram and Google, um, the past decade, you know, it really messed with our relationship with technology. Now, I think this next decade needs to be about design thinking. It needs to be about cultivating these tools and, again, being intentional so that when we go roll out products, what is this actually going to look like? What is what type of impact is this actually going to have on community? Um, if you're opening a business, let's say you're opening a uh, coffee shop or a dog grooming business, Mozilla Hubs is great for that. So you can get a idea of what you want your business to look like before you even sign your lease um, or before you even go and invest in building out that space. And virtual reality is so uh, powerful because it's an empathy machine, really. Virtual reality is, is, can promote empathy because if I put on my headset and I put myself in a classroom that you built, okay, I have an idea of what it's like being in your classroom. And I can tell you now, okay, I sat in a simulation of your classroom and this is what I thought about. It. Or, you know, I visited your business virtually and here's how it made me feel. This is how the art that you chose is hitting me. So you can take all this feedback and take all this data in and build the best best uh, possible product first. And then you can go to your investors, you can go to the bank and say, hey, we've built it out. This is exactly what it's gonna look like. This is what you're funding. This is what you're investing in. And because it's so visual, you know, it's a great way to get people excited about your vision. Um, that's why I love virtual reality. That's why I love this tool. I use this for so many different things. Um, and it's just powerful. Uh, Antoine said Mozilla Hubs is a game changer. Looking forward to learning this with you. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely, guys. I, I really hope that we can get people into the Explore Path and we can um, just keep playing with hubs. You know, me and Nicole did um, a two day hubs training session back in March. And once again, shout out the tribe. People really showed up. People showed out. People were excited. And from then I knew, okay, the more people that know about these tools, man, it's spooky. It's spooky. We can be so much more intentional about what we're doing. Um, this is 3D design for me coming from architectural. Okay, perfect, D. Thank you. And that's what I'm saying. Like, so the big architecture firms, they've probably been doing this for years, building out spaces and uh, you know, simulations and and 3D renderings before they actually broke ground. But now with these type of tools, that's being democratized. So again, like, you know, I can decide how I want my house to look. Um, I can decide what I want my um, my daughter's room to look. I can decide what I want, um, you know, my shoes to look, a car to look, you know, whatever it is. I, you know, Tesla might drop a new car and I say, OK, like, well, that's cool, but I do it like this just because. You know, again, it's about posterity. It's about future humans. It's about aggregating our ideas so that future people, future generations have a reference point to improve their quality of life. Nicole said the masses have access and I hope y'all really understand how big that is. Um, a whole other level of reality versus digital and consciousness. Absolutely. It's, it's like our own simulation. This is our own matrix. We can control it. We can manipulate it. Um, with a laptop. I sort of got a laptop. I don't think you need anything else. Well, internet connection, laptop, internet connection. And now you're creating your own virtual spaces. You're creating your own matrix. Um, and it's, it's powerful, guys. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't want to um, go over too much. I know we're already about 90 minutes in. I wanted to save some time for um, Tuan. I know he probably wanted to wrap it up with everybody, but also any questions I'm here all the way. Um, this has been very enlightening, enjoyable, and informative presentation about design thinking. My favorite part is how you explain that school has taught us to think of design as only for exclusive, isolated, and special people. Yet creativity is inherent in human nature, 100%. And I don't care what workshop we're on. I don't care what class we're in. We are going to, uh, that is always going to be the case. 
That is literally always going to be the case. Like that is hard coded. Great human creativity is hard coded. Like, and one only needs to study history to really realize that. I mean, look at the pyramids, look at ancient structures, look at uh the Great Wall of China, like look at the uh the the seven wonders of the ancient world. Like these are these are designers, you know, these these are ancient designers that knew a long time ago, you know, before the whole personal computing revolution that, you know, no, we are in charge of shaping our reality and that the higher intelligence gave us the tools. What we do with it is on us. So thank you. Ooh, Omex. That's my favorite word. I was I was doing I was I was um doing some Omex cultural studies the other day. I love them. Um, very powerful. Um, so if you guys, um, don't know about the old Max, that's definitely something to check out. And, you know, as a designer, one thing that has elevated me personally is studying my ancestors. Um, and I know I can speak for the, the, um, the unlock team, uh, in the same light, you know, we study our ancestors and we elevate because everything that we need, they already provided. We just need to go excavate that. Um, even with uh, our automated trading platform called T.Bot, you know, that came from Antoine studying ancient Egypt and studying, um, you know, Fibonacci mathematics and geometry and seeing that, oh, these ancient patterns are also showing up in the Forex market. Wow. OK, let me design a program that can make the 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 knowledge of my ancestors accessible to everybody in my community and that's what we do this stuff is so powerful i'm i'm gonna pass it on to twan real quick and i just wanted to um yes yes i just wanted to real quick before i let you or I, before i let you take over bro i wanted to um recommend this book to you guys it is called the future is faster than you think this book is a game changer. How converging technologies are transforming business industries and our lives. This book is definitely about design. It's definitely about technologies that haven't hit the mainstream media yet. So we're not even thinking about them or talking about them, but they are actively shaping our future as we speak. Um, such a powerful book. Uh, definitely check that out to um um, open your mind up. I see Nicole and Nicole is so on it. I don't even know how she does it. <laughs> right. <laughs> she, uh, she just dropped that link for y'all. And um, Brian, the author is, we got Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler. Great book. Great book. You can't put it down. It's just like every chapter, you're like, holy, like I got to go lay down because I'm not ready. Let's go. <laughs> I, yeah, I appreciate y'all so much. Like I said, I love talking about design. I love, um, I love just just sharing what I know. Like I said, I've I've been a designer for you know over thirty years now. Um, so I have I have so much knowledge that I want to share, and I just can't wait to see how we come together and what we build. Thank you, bro. You sharing books and all that, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, sure. Thank you for dropping that off at the end. We needed that on top of everything else you said. Listen, I got a uh, notebook full of notes right here. I'm, I was locked in. I hope everybody else in the tribe was. I've seen a lot of activity. Uh, and I wanted to shout out, what's the name? Who You heard what they said too, bro. This was really dope. Um, inspiring and full of value, Quadira. Okay, so, appreciate like, it. I, I couldn't relate any better for real. Nicole said, amazing <laughs> session. This was strong. Let's go. So if you guys would like more sessions like these, we just pretty much are inviting you to uh, to join us on this explore path. And uh, Zach obviously is ready to teach more and more. This was literally just a, a taste of what he really can can talk about. So thank you again, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. That's just that you know that that iceberg graphic that we always mind. We just we just scratching the the top of the top of the iceberg. That's yeah, it. for real. Thank you for doing that. The future is faster than you think. All right. Tap in with that book. And uh, when we start having our book clubs, you guys already be in the loop. So that, that sounds good. Uh, yeah. So once again, 39 bucks a month for our path and our, our special program that we're doing just to end off this year um, and, and kind of help people get over that procrastination is you sign up for one month, 
and then the next two are free. Okay, so we'll we'll automatically do that for you, and that's our special to you. And you have until tomorrow to take advantage of that. All right, and once again, you get access to so much as soon as you join instantly, and on top of that, you're gonna get live classes um, as soon as we kick the top of the year off. Okay. So uh, I know we went over a little bit, but thank you all for being here. Everybody hung around, which was real cool. Yeah, uh, that's when they were super engaged. <laughs> no drop off rate. That's good. That's what we do too. So uh, I'm glad that we just still able to inspire people to unlock and make change. Thank you, bro. Thank, thank you. So thank you guys for having me. Congrats. Congrats. Yes, yes. All right, uh, tribe. We will see y'all tomorrow for the next session. Definitely be here same time. Invite a friend as well. Uh, we got some more surprises and more tribe to bring to you. Peace, everybody. Y'all, I'm just um real quick. I'm just dropping my IG. If anybody want to just DM me, if y'all want to connect. Thank you, bro. Uh, I'm open. So I just dropped that in the chat. I love you guys. Peace and unlock.